video, I've got five tips to help you clean up those guitar solos. How many times have you been playing either in your room or studio or even on stage and you start to get into something a little faster, you want to speed up the guitar solo or maybe use a, a different technique, but things get a little sloppy. Well, these five strategies, ones I've been using for years now, I truly believe they will help you clean things up. And these are tips that you can put into place right away. They're very practical as you guys would expect from me and you can do these today right now and this is truly going to help you clean up those solos now we're going to jump right in but do hang around for our usual guitar chat at the end of the video this first tip helps eliminate string noise and string noise is one of the most common things that lead to sloppy guitar solos <laughs> you're playing one note and that's the note you want everyone to hear but then you start getting noise from all the other strings or at least the ones surrounding it well i'm going to play just one single note with a little vibrato in it and I want you to pay attention to my right hand. Okay, so check this out. So what I'm doing here is I'm using these two fingers to mute the surrounding strings of the string that I'm playing, which that's the note that I want to, to be held out. So that's the B string, right? So you heard a little bit of that noise, and I don't know how well you can hear it here, but there's a little noise starting to creep in. So you saw me quickly, you know, throw my fingers down there on the G and the E string to mute those, okay? So let's let's do this again. Hear all the noise going on there? Now, let's implement this little strategy, and uh, I don't really have a cool name for it. Kind of looks like a little crabby. We'll call it the crabby strategy. That's kind of cheesy. Anyway, let's just do it, okay? So here's with the technique. And even with doing like hammer-ons and pull-offs, if you're doing something like this. So it can work in something like that as well. Now, I'm not gonna get into detail, but you see how I kind of had to go across, right? I'm, I'm doing hammer-ons and pull-offs on different strings. I screwed up at the end there. My thumb hit the, the E string as I was, you know, again, I'm kind of making this stuff up as we go, but uh, I like to share the screw-ups with you and all. That's what I was talking about earlier. You have to be careful with that because sometimes uh, you might unintentionally mute the string that you're playing on. So just a quick tip, but again, that can really help eliminate string noise when you're playing. This next tip is super simple and super practical, and it's in regards to pickup choice for the techniques that you're using during your guitar solo. You'll notice sometimes I'll switch back and forth between my bridge and my neck pickup here, and it's because I'm going to be playing some different styles, okay, with one or the other. You'll see this a lot when I'm playing live on stage, and I'll share why this works so well and how this is going to help you clean things up. So I probably use the bridge pickup, and this is just me personally, guys. I use this probably 70% of the time, and I'm using the bridge pickup for just, I guess, regular guitar solos, and when I'm doing any kind of tapping or if I'm, I'm playing any kind of like pinch harmonics or, or natural harmonics, anything like that. So most everything except for a couple of techniques we're going to get into next, but let me just kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about. <laughs> The reason why, though, I use it for that, because to me, that kind of helps cut through the mix when I'm playing that style. And again, back to things like the pinch harmonics or if using natural harmonics, uh, the hammer-ons pull off, they tend to just, it tends to bring those out a little bit better. Now, I'm gonna switch over to the neck pickup. I'm gonna play a little bit different style here. <laughs> Any 
anytime I'm doing really fast alternate picking, or if I'm playing, you know, arpeggio, sweep arpeggios, or sweep picking, any of that stuff, I tend to use my neck pickup because it just sounds a little bit cleaner, okay? I don't know something about it. Maybe it gives it a little more uh, bottom end as you're, as you're playing those notes, so they sound a bit more fluid, uh, like they're naturally supposed to sound. Now, if I go back to my bridge pickup here, let me just do some alternate picking on that. I mean, it sounds okay, but when I switch up to that neck pickup, just sounds a little bit cleaner. So that's just a very uh, easy and practical tip. You know, when you're playing that fast alternate picking, use that neck pickup or if you're playing sweep arpeggios. And it doesn't mean you you have to play with a neck pickup. I mean, try both. You might like the, the bridge pickup better, but it's just kind of my personal tips. So the pickup, you know, the pickup choice depends on what style or really what techniques that I'm using rather. This next tip I'm gonna give you can help prevent you wrecking your your entire solo and that's the fact that sometimes we like to think further ahead we'll be here in the solo in this piece of the music but we're already thinking about the end of the solo wondering can I pull that off I want to do this at the end there can I pull it off but hey you're not there yet so what I encourage you to do is focus on where you're at okay in that solo, in the part of the song, focus on that micro focus on that very moment you're in. I'll kind of give you a weightlifting analogy for those of you who train. Let's say you've got four sets, right? You're doing squats, okay? You got four sets of 10 or four sets of whatever. You're on your second set, but you're already thinking about the last set. You're already wondering, am I gonna have enough juice to do that last set? And no, I don't mean that kind of juice, guys, come on. Anyway, are you gonna have the, the mental energy and sustainability to get that last set? Are you gonna go heavy, are you gonna go lighter? What is it gonna be? Well, you're not there yet. You're only on set number two. Focus on that second set before going to the third and then to the fourth, okay? So focus on just a few notes at a time, okay? So I'm just gonna play a short, again, guys, I'm making this stuff up as we go. <laughs> That's the beauty of this. And I love hanging out with you guys doing this. I love, I love being here with you. It's like we're here in the room jamming together, okay? I'm just gonna focus on just a few notes. <laughs> So if you notice, I kind of focused on just that one little section of the solo. And, and keep in mind, I'm improvising, right? It's what we do here. Uh, I'm improvising, but I'm focused just on that one little section. Doesn't mean I can't go here or here or wherever else, but at the moment, that's what I'm focused on. So as I'm focusing on that, I kind of came up with something different. Sometimes we tend to just like play all over. You know, we want to play fast and play all over the fretboard, and that's fine. I encourage that. Hey, shred, shred up. That's great. But when you zero in on exactly what you're doing at that moment, sometimes you come up with these really, really cool melodies, okay? And you're not worried about what you're gonna do 10 seconds from now, or, or you know, the next part of the song or any of that. You're zeroed in on right now, and you're just going to allow yourself two things. One, you're gonna allow yourself to play more accurately. Why? Because you're focused on that. Right? You're not worried about, well, can I play that next part fast enough? Or can I even can I even play that next series of notes fast enough? No, you're focused on the note that you're playing. I, I wanna go as far as to say focus on one note at a time. I know sometimes we're playing faster and that you know, it's kinda hard to do, but focus just on that one little section. Just focus on one section of the solo at a time, okay? And just allow yourself to, to breathe throughout the process and enjoy the process. Uh, so again, that's gonna bring you more accuracy because you're focused, but it's also gonna bring out, the second thing, it's gonna bring out more creativity in your playing as well, because you're gonna, as you're focusing, you're gonna come up with new things. You're like, wow, you know, I'm here in this moment right now, and new things are just kinda pop out all over the place. It's kinda cool, so I, I really encourage you to Take this strategy I'm sharing with you and really start applying it. Just zero in on the moment. 
during that guitar solo, okay? Don't worry about what's coming next. Focus on right now. Not a bad life strategy either. Tip number four, and this falls right in line with the tip we just talked about. You know, we talked about focusing on the notes. I want you to dive another level deeper into this and don't just play the notes. And this can happen when you're looking at tabs, when you're trying to learn another guitar solo and the, and the tabs say, well, play this note, that note, and that note, do a bend here. So you just play those notes. You know, and it just kind of becomes mechanical, it kind of becomes robotic. And I'm not saying don't use tabs. I mean, I, I give you guys tabs in, in my guitar courses, by the way, if you're not in my Metal Riff Master course, uh, definitely get into that. There's a link in the description. I also give tabs to my Patreon supporters. And actually, I'm, I'm in the process of developing a lead guitar course. I'll be giving you tabs to that. I don't want to make this about tabs, though. What, what I'm saying here is don't just play those notes, okay? Put some feeling into those notes. Don't just play it, right? I want you to feel it instead. I want you to think about each individual note as you're, especially when you're playing something a little slower like that, okay? Okay, and again, we're just making stuff up here, but we're just putting a little bit more thought into that note. And you don't always have to bend, and a lot of times you can do a bend or do a vibrato, you know, and that's gonna help, right? That's gonna help you put more passion into those notes. I want you to think of the note as its own entity, okay? Give special attention to each and every note that you play, right? Now, sometimes one note may be a pass to the next note, right? So you might have something like this. Okay, that second note I played was sort of like what I call a pass through. That was that was like a little bridge to get to that next note. Instead of You hear the difference and, and you should be able to feel that difference as well. I hope this makes sense. So uh, with that said, let's move on to the final tip. And this is an extremely practical tip, guys. I actually want you to do what I'm doing right now. I want you to film yourself, okay? Whether you record a backing track and, and maybe you want to record yourself too, that's fine. Uh, but I want you to see yourself playing. Maybe you have some exercises that you're running through. Uh, maybe you're practicing skills or whatever. Just run through these things and film yourself for five, maybe 10 minutes. I want you then to go back and watch yourself, okay? Watch yourself play. Hear what's coming out and watch your fingers. What are your fingers doing? What, what movements are they doing? What expression are you portraying to the camera? I know you're just filming yourself and you don't have to, you don't have to act like you're on stage or anything like that, but just pay close attention to these things. When you're looking at yourself playing, is there distress? Are you kind of like, oh man, do you, do you, do you see yourself having that sense of, I'm not sure if this is going to turn out so well. <laughs> or when you watch yourself on camera, do you sense, hey, you know what? I've got some confidence in that part of, of what I just played. Well, point those parts out where you're confident in that video. And those are going to be your natural strong points. And what I say is build on those because that's kind of your, your natural, what I say, God-given ability. Build on those, okay? Make those even greater because that's what's already within you. And the other parts of the video where you don't look so confident, you can see your, your composure, you're kind of like, oh man, I'm not really sure about this part, what I'm doing right here. Well, you know, those are some things that, that you can work on as well uh, if you choose to keep them. You know, we all have our own style and I want to really encourage you to develop your own style and sound. Okay, I've said this like a broken record before. Don't focus on trying to be like someone else or play like someone else or sound like anyone else. 
focus on your own style and sound. Uh, but again, just pull out the camera, film yourself, do what we're doing right now. Uh, I do this on a regular basis because I'm always filming. Um, by the way, I'll share some screw-ups with you in a second here when we get to our guitar chat, which we're going to get to right now. But yeah, film yourself and then go back and watch yourself play. And, you know, don't beat yourself up over mistakes. Make the mistakes. Mistakes are fine. Again, I'm about to share some with you. Uh, but just realize where you're at. Realize where your strong points are. Even write those down, okay? Uh, maybe write down your weak points as well. Okay, I'm strong at this. I'm going to, I'm going to, beef those up even more, but I need to work on some areas over here as well. Just acknowledge that and that's just going to help you get better. Guys, it is time for our guitar chat, but real quick, I did mention my guitar courses I have. I have links to all of my guitar courses in the description of this video. Uh, many of you are already in Metal Riff Master. That has helped so many people just take their metal rhythm chops to that next level. If you're just starting out, I have a course called Metal Guitar Apprentice that goes over the fundamentals of heavy metal guitar. Now, I mentioned a lead guitar course guys I am working hard on that course so I hope to have that out in the beginning of 2023 probably February March something like that so stay tuned for more now I want to share some screw up footage this was me trying to record that first solo which again this is all improv but anyway <laughs> check this out but I've got some very important points I want to make to you after that <laughs> Yeah, some of that was rough and I did get a little frustrated and guys just to reveal some more weaknesses here let's just take a look at how many takes okay how many tracks I recorded to get to the one that I really wanted yeah almost 80 holy crap guys I shared that with you to share just the simple fact that hey I'm not perfect I screw up sometimes sometimes I get frustrated sometimes I have a hard time uh, getting out what I want on guitar it happens uh, that's just part of being a musician and look I'm a full-time musician guys I do this stuff for a living what I will say that I tend to play a lot better especially when it comes to guitar solos when I'm playing live and I'm just improvising there. So I tend to do really well at that, but when I'm here in the studio or if I'm recording like my album, which I'm in the middle of recording one and I'm, you know, I'm getting that down. It's like, okay, well, oh, I didn't like that. Or I screwed up here and <laughs> it can just be a disaster. So I don't know. I just, I hope this helps you a little bit. Uh, when you make mistakes or when you get frustrated, just know that I go through the same thing and any guitar player out there, I don't care how great they are, how great they say they are, they all go through times of frustration and times where, man, I just can't seem to nail it today. So I just wanted to encourage you that you're not the only one and don't let that be a reason to stop or to back down. Hey, keep pushing forward, keep pushing yourself, okay? You're going to get through that. I promise you. So anyway, I hope that helps. <laughs> hope that helps some of you get through those discouraging times. Because again, we all have them. Okay, it's just part of life. Guys, please give this a thumbs up if the video helped you. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Turn on those notifications. I'm constantly putting out content like this, uh, really just to help you become a better guitarist and better musician. And then hopefully some of the things that we talk about also help in other areas in your life as well. That's what this channel is all about. Guys, thank you once again. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, keep it metal and keep playing music.